In 1997, there was a sound underwater. It baffled everyone who heard it. They called it the bloop. The bloop was heard and recorded all over the Pacific Ocean. Then suddenly, it vanished. I found the one from 1997 online. Listen. They're virtually the same. <gasps> it's a GSM. Let me guess, giant sea monster? <laughs> what else? Ant, most scientists believe the original bloop was the sound of icebergs cracking. Those scientists never proved anything and lacked my overactive imagination. And given we're off Papua New Guinea... There's a noticeable lack of icebergs. And this bloop is less than 20 kilometers away. I wonder if it's connected to that. Marks are fresh. Proceed with caution, Ed. We don't know what's out there. Oh, I so do. A conch shell. Clearly a giant sea monster dragged its equally giant prey from there to its fearful lair. That way! I hate to burst your bubble, Ant, but these marks are way too precise and even to be drag marks. It looks more like... <sighs> That's no bloop. It's a deep sea mining machine. It's gonna eat the rover! Ant, it's too late! Don't do it! No! Ant! You're cutting it too close! Huh? Ah! 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 Come on, come on, come on! Ah. Whoa! Ant, back to the Aranax. Now. Uh-huh. Uh and I should, in the future, remember that I'm far harder to replace than the rover. Oh! And the listen to instructions thing. <laughs> Never, ever risk your life like that again. That mining machine is just eating everything. We've got to stop it. We're trying. Your father's talking to the World Oceans Authority right now. And there's nothing they can do. This area is not a marine reserve. <sighs> but there's a bloop out there. Did it just hear you? The tone changed. It's not just one sound. Come on out, GSM, wherever you are. It's not gonna come when it's called, Ant. It's a sea monster, not a dog. Ha! So you admit it's a sea monster. Ugh. That last transmission came from within one kilometer. Nectins, my name's Bruce Alba from Deep Sea Mining. We need you to clear this area. We're extracting rare earth minerals. And you need to stop. We have reason to believe there's something quite unique in the area. We heard a bloop. A bloop? You mean that iceberg sound from decades ago? No one knows what made the sound. And there are no icebergs in the area. It may be coming from a living creature. We need you to stop your machine until we can locate the source. I'm not shutting down this entire operation for a hypothetical creature. If you can give me evidence instead of theories, I'll think about it. He'll think about it? Everyone spread out and try to cover as much ground as you can. We need to find the source of the bloop. Stay alert, Jeffrey. We're looking for a giant sea monster. What is it? The bloop. Professor Fiction, did you hear that? Loud and clear. And I can triangulate the location. Turn to the left and head up that rise. Track marks. That machine went by here before. <laughs> There's a coral bed down there, but no giant sea monsters. Uh, Professor, are you sure this is the right place? I'm sure. Keep looking, Ant. So far, nothing giant or even sea monster-ish. Is 
coming from the coral. This is beyond words. It may be a whole new life form. I'm gonna call it Antazoa cantus. Get it? Antazoa is already the word for coral, and cantus is a vocal ensemble. Does every new species we discover have to be named after you? Don't be ridiculous. Only the really interesting ones. Well, this certainly is interesting. But where's the sound coming from? We need to take a closer look. How? None of us could fit more than a hand in there. One of us can fit. Ant, your head is huge. You can't fit. My head is a perfectly acceptable size. But I'm not talking about me. Let's get back to the Aranax and set up the fish cam. I'd suggest you hurry back, Ant. Why? What's wrong? The machine is making another track. And the next pass is directly in line with the organism. Jeffrey, your time to be a hero. I got your message. You want me to stop operations because of Coral. Communicating Coral. Antisoa Cantus, though nobody likes that name yet. It's a scientific miracle. Coral, the docks. It's definitely making sound. Sound is not communication. Do you have any proof that it's aware? I may have an idea. We'll get you proof, but please, the coral is in the direct path of your machine. You have to stop it. The cost of this operation is astronomical. I can't shut down because maybe coral is making noises. You get me cold, hard proof. We don't have much time. Ant, take Jeffrey into fish camp out there and find out how it's making that noise. This is your idea? Starting a band? The bloop varies in pitch, volume, and tone. What does that seem like? <sighs> Music. I'm gonna play my own version of the bloop through the Aranax's external speakers. If the coral responds... Then it's trying to communicate. And that proves it's sentient. Let's hope it likes my music. Yeah! I mean, statistically, someone has to, right? Maybe a different key? Go in! In! Explore everywhere! Ah, good move. Psych yourself up. Get in the zone. And? Is Jeffrey in place? Uh, he's getting in the zone. We don't have time. The machine is already coming toward us and will eventually lead to the coral. Let's slow it down. What? How? Come on, Jeffrey. I have faith in you. Yes, that a boy. Ready? Let's do this. ate something it shouldn't, uh, but we're close. Just give us more time. Ant, do you have it? Jeffrey's inside, but the coral isn't singing. We have to make it sing. See, the sound is coming from there. Somehow, it forces the water through tiny tubes. And different sized tubes make different notes, like a flute. You're really talking! 
You did it, Fontaine! Something actually appreciates your musical ability! What is that? That's the proof you were after. Turn off your machine. What? Let's not forget, what we call coral is millions of organisms operating as a single colony. Millions of organisms making music together. Incredible. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. And you won't see it again, unless you turn off your machine. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Pair it down, now! What? How? What's happening? My engineers are saying there was some sort of explosion inside the machine. The rover arm. We've lost from our control. We can't power the machine down. We can't stop it. I can't hold this much longer. Tell me you found a way to change its course, Professor. I don't think we can change its course. We have to turn it off. How? An EMP. What? An electromagnetic pulse. A burst of energy that nullifies any electrical device. Where are we going to get an EMP? Oh, I always have one on me. Uh, why? I'm an inventor. I created my first EMP right after I accidentally created my first rebellious toaster. If the EMP is our only option, then we have to take it. Do it. We'll deal with the consequences at this end. Okay, Ant. The EMP will need to go on the front panel. So, just above the giant spinning blades of death? Yes. Um, try to avoid those. It's on! Okay, I can activate the EMP remotely, but get well clear of it, or it'll knock out your communications. I'm losing it! Oh, Do it now, Fiction! I just have to figure out how much power to give the EMP. Give it everything! Okay, I'll take it all the way to 11. It goes to 11? Why not 10? <laughs> I've never been great with numbers. Uh, that's reassuring. Firing in three, two, five! What? Oh, uh, there's something I forgot to mention. Yes, Professor, it worked. Oh, it worked on Mom and Dad, too. Yes, uh, that's the bit I forgot. Mom's okay. Checking on Dad. <laughs> so I guess we did it. No! Impossible! What's happening? I don't know. The backup power. What backup power? It was a last-minute addition. And you didn't think to mention this earlier? I'm the project manager, not an engineer. So all we've succeeded in doing is knocking out Mom and Dad? Where is this backup power? It's in the very center of the machine. I'm sending you the latest schematics. <laughs> there! We have to get inside the machine and uncouple it manually. And it's impenetrable. So what? That's it? We sit back and let the machine destroy this creature? Can you hear that? I'll bring power packs for the rover and the drone knight. We will get back in this fight. The machine is unstoppable. So are we. Use that giant brain of yours, Professor. There has to be something. There is something. Something missing. There are no schematics for the bottom of the mining machine. And I have a mission for your fish. There might be a way to override the backup power from underneath the machine. I need Jeffrey to find out. Jeffrey, you're a hero. And you're needed once again. Go under. Get it? Under. Ant, is it working? Uh, he's getting in the zone. Where'd he go? He's under the machine. I'm getting pictures. Yes. Ah, uh, there. There's an opening, but it's small. Well, I'm small. Do you think I'd fit? Hmm, maybe. It's two-thirds of the way from the front. You sure about this, Ant? Absolutely. I'm the only one who will fit. And if I don't do this, the reef will be destroyed. I'll get Mom and Dad back in the game. We'll do everything we can to buy you time. 
another mining zone. You don't sound too unhappy, Mr. Alba. Well, I'm now the man whose machine didn't swallow one of the rarest life forms on Earth. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy about that. I expect you'll do a far more thorough investigation of your next site. Because if anything else is threatened by your mining, we will be there. Oh, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> I think the Reef wants to say thank you. Is that a happy bloop? From a purely scientific perspective, I'd say that is a very happy bloop. I don't care what it was. How many people get to duet with a coral reef? Give it a try. Hey, it replied! We could form a band! No, no you couldn't. Uh, I'm not reading any toxins. Theory number one just crashed and burned. And I don't have a theory number two. I can see algae, larval shrimp, the occasional nematodes. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet here. Just no fish to eat it. It's okay, Jeffrey. Come on in. The water's fine. Right. Let's see how deep this problem goes. I'll take us down. It's okay, Mom. I've got this. 
Are you sure? You've never piloted below a thousand meters before. You said I needed more piloting hours. The depth should be part of my practice. Mom, if Fontaine is driving, could you get Jeffrey and maybe make him a little seatbelt? Bye, Aunt. Hey, wait for me! Most fish live in the top sunlight zone, so let's try below 200 meters. What if the twilight zone is empty too? Then we're in very strange territory indeed. Ant, you should be able to see fish here that have adapted to low light. Nope, they're staying away. Maybe they just don't like you. Or there's some major fish party that we haven't been invited to and everyone else has tickets. I'll admit, it's a long shot. Come back inside, Ant. We're going deeper. Okay, we're below a thousand meters. Welcome to the midnight zone. Around 180 atmospheres of pressure are squeezing against the Aranax right now. Fontaine, slow, steady moves, please. Keep your eyes peeled. Oh, come to port. Three degrees, Fontaine. I saw it too. Look. Kill the interior lights. Anglerfish? It's possible. But many species use bioluminescence down here. At least it's something. Nice to see you guys! So we do have fish in the midnight zone. Whoa! Ah! What happened? Outside temperature rising. Volcanic thermal vents. Stay clear. Trying. My remote diagnostics picked up multiple alarms. It's okay, Professor. We're handling it. Are you really at 190 atmospheres? Boiling water rising fast enough to pick up pieces of seabed. I've never seen vertical currents this strong. Mom! It's okay, Fontaine. I've got this. Thermal vents in the midnight zone are no place for a driving lesson. Thanks. So, if all the fish seem normal down deep, then the problem is up here, right? I've got something on sonar. A large object. Another submarine? No, it's not solid. But what is it? You're the marine biologist. You tell us. Is that every fish in the area altogether? I told you there was a fish party we weren't invited to! Coming to full stop. I need pictures here. <sighs> totally bizarre. What are they all looking at? I have to see this up close. Fontaine, take over. You'll be fine. Very... Very strange. They don't even notice me. They're turning to port now. What's glowing? Uh, I'm not sure. Moving closer. Just be very careful, Keiko. Fish are letting me brush them aside like they don't care. There's something moving in the center. A creature? About half the size of the rover. But so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Oh, the pretty woody creature. This is cuddly woody. Okay, that's uncomfortable. Mom, can you hear me? Keiko? Uh, you okay? Talk like an adult if you can hear me, okay? Oh, pretty. Her vital signs are fine. Pulse normal, blood pressure normal, but she's not responding to us. It's like she's in a trance. Are you reading me, Keiko? Uh, Mom's still controlling her night. That's good, I suppose. Fish keep getting drawn to the light, like they're hypnotized. 
I've checked everything in our database. Nothing matches this. Bioluminescent nerves are used to attract prey to eat, right? Well, um, yes. Right now, Keiko is prey. I'm going to get her. Dad! Hey! You might need these. Mom's welding goggles. They'll cut out most of the creature's light. Good thinking. Hey. I'll bring her back. Don't worry. Is it possible that those geysers of warm water forced this thing up from the Midnight Zone without it disintegrating? It's not unprecedented. For example, sperm whales go down and back. They're strong enough to withstand the pressure difference. It's changing course. Fish up here have never seen a bioluminescent lure. It doesn't need to hunt. Fish come to it. And Professor, bioluminescence attracts fish, not people. Oh, but light affects people too, Fontaine. We get vitamin D from sunlight, their sunburn, and strobe lights can make people ill. I still think it's hypnotism. Remember when I put you under? For five minutes you thought you were a penguin. <laughs> what? You will forget I said anything. Switching on the rover's infrared camera. Good. We can't afford to see the creature's visible light spectrum. Will to Keiko. Can you hear me? Got her! Yes! Good job, All Dad! Right. I... I can see... Dad? Dad, what's happening? No, no, no! Don't do it! Who's the pretty one? Yeah, it's you. It's not me. It's you who's the pretty one. can't get mom and dad away from that glow. They're never coming back. Dad, talk to us. Coochie, coochie, coo. <laughs> the rover's remote control system. We can bring it back. Yes! <laughs> I love it when a plan comes in. <gasps> no! Dad just overrode the remote. I think this is a good idea. Two knights are stronger than one. Maybe we can grab mom and drag her back. Then worry about the rover. How do we see? We don't. We can't afford to. We'll rely on instruments. You know how I'm often critical of your harebrained ideas? So often. <sighs> I've got nothing better. I'll take that. Jeffrey, I'm leaving you in charge. I have complete faith in you, Captain. Turn on your sonar. Uh, I knew that. Activating stealth mode too. I'm keeping a low profile. Only for radar. He can still see you. Okay, the fish just changed direction. Again. Is it lost? Is that what's going on? even looking at us. Wait, the cloud has stopped moving. Something's happening. The creature's coming. It's a gigantic anglerfish. What's it doing up here? It's heading towards you. Uh, but I'm undercover. I'm in stealth mode. Why me? Am I the fish mind reader? I don't know. Okay, stay in calm. You're my backup if it tries to eat me. You got me, right, Fontaine? Kinda. Just don't move. 
do you think it's doing? It seemed to be lost, but now it's staring at you. Like it's found something. Well, I am very charismatic. Two fish? Jeffrey thinks so. <sighs> of course he does. Just don't move a muscle, Mr. Charisma. Am I allowed to breathe? I'd prefer you didn't. <gasps> I can't stand this! It's like it's sizing me up! Thinking, will I take a bite of arm or leg? They both look so good! Oh, why was I cursed with being so appealing to fish? One of the world's great mysteries. Okay, I'm gonna move aside. Slowly. Not smart, but that's so you. It's moving with you. But why? <sighs> Just go away! You shouldn't even be here! Go home! Wait a minute. Ant, disengage stealth mode. Are you crazy? What for? Just trust me. I hope you know what you're doing. I hope so too. <gasps> it's swimming away. But why? I'm still food. It was attracted to the Shadow Knight's stealth glow. It's almost identical to its own. Maybe it thinks you're related. That's it. Come on. And? Loves that mirror. Eh, she won't mind. Now, I need you to follow behind me in the Aranax. We'll use a claw arm to grab Mom and Dad. Great idea, except I can barely see anything on the infrared monitors through all those fish. It would be like picking a needle out of a haystack. Just follow me. I'll start leading that thing down, back to where it belongs. Once we get deeper, some of those fish won't be able to take the pressure, and they'll start to back off. That's when you grab the rover with the claw. At those depths, it'll be harder for me to steer the ship and maneuver the arm. I know, but it's the best harebrained idea I've got. Are you up to it? As long as it gets Mom and Dad back, that's all I care about. Me too. Stay close to me. I'll try. Hang in there, Dad. This will work, Mom. Trust me. Hey, slow drivers! Move! Coming through! Fear left! Look out! Okay, there you are. All right, fish. Who is this? Like what you see? So far, so good, Fontaine. Keep it smooth. Come on, that's it. Let's just get you home. Come deeper. Okay, entering the midnight zone. What if these fish won't be able to handle the pressure here? They're leaving! But you keep coming, big guy. I've got a clean visual. Uh, Ant? How deep are you going? As deep as I have to. Ant, we didn't discuss this. The rover can go right to the very bottom, but not the Aranax, and definitely not the Knights. My Knight is stronger than you think. And you're not as strong as you think. Maybe, but home for this guy's down deep, in the midnight zone. Not my favorite zone to drive in. You can do it, Fontaine. <sighs> Gentle moves. Take it easy. <sighs> Huge pressure here. Getting really hard to move. I'm reading 219 atmospheres. 219 times normal, Ant. I don't want to think about it. Our friend is feeling fine. For him, it's like a walk in the park. I think it's time. It's your turn now, Fontaine. Come on. I'm being gentle. Okay. Pressurizing the moon pool room. Equalizing with the midnight zone pressure. Engaging claw arm. Contact! He's fighting me! This is your plan! Are you sure the claw arm is stronger than the rover? Um, when I say plan, it's really more of a shot in the dark. And you're telling me this now? I 
can't hold this for long. Then we'll have to be quick. It's time for part two. Uh, uh, don't fight it, please. No! can do this. Up to me. No! Look out, Ant! So much for gentle moves. I'm not letting go. Now or ever! What's happening? Okay, Dad. I need you to grab Mom. But whatever you do, don't open your eyes. Okay. What? Where am I? Oops! Sorry about that, Mr. Fish! And don't look at it! Fontaine, what just happened? Don't worry about it. Dad, I need you to get Mom. Right. Do exactly what I say and remember to not open your eyes. When I say, I need you to clamp down with the rover's arms. Gently, I'll direct you. Straight ahead. Get ready. Get ready. A little to the left. Right. Okay, Mom. Everything's all right. Except... Ant! It's coming right for you! Where is it? To your left! The mirror! Oh, no! It's diving, Ant! You did it! It's following all of its reflections down! Safe travels, big guy. Come back to the Aranax. The fish are safe now. So is the amazing hypnotist. Dad, don't open the canopy. The pressure is too strong. Thanks for that. I feel like I've just woken up from the nicest dream. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. Do you think that is the creature's mother? Well, there's a definite family resemblance. Family reunions are a good thing. He's back home now. Let's hope he stays down there. You guys did very well. We should let Fontaine pilot more often. Thanks. Well, that'll be up to Jeffrey. Huh? He's captain now. Gee, you fall into one trance and you miss so much. It's okay, Captain Jeffrey. The good news is you'll never have to see the scary fish again. Bad news is you still have to see Ant. Apparently, that was humor, Jeffrey. 